Hey guys, today I'm going to walk you through step by step how to create uh, this website. Now it doesn't have to look just like this and it doesn't have to have this function, um, but I'm going to show you this and hopefully you'll start to get some ideas how you can use uh, these technologies to create your own uh, functioning site. And this is, it doesn't use a database. Um, Ideally, you would, uh, the computer would do the work for you with some programming um, and the use of a database. We're going to just be leveraging free technologies. We're going to be using Google Sheets and Google Forms and Google Calendar, uh, which all are uh, free to, uh, to use. So it's going to reduce our costs a lot. So the reason you'd build a site like this is if you want, you know, you have a low on budget or you want to test an idea before you pay the programmers uh, to make it uh, real, this is a very quick way to test the idea. So here's how the site works. You get here and you can see upcoming family events. You can see upcoming work days. And we could add several other kinds of uh, titles or categories, but we're just going to do two for now. And then you have the option to submit a family event or to submit a work day. So maybe you're a homeschooling group and you want to go to the beach and meet other homeschoolers to, um, to, to build community. Well, you'd submit your family event and then anybody else that's on this network can come here and see and show up. Um, that's the idea. So it's sort of like a community bulletin board, if you will. And work days might be if you're a business and you're looking to... Um, to get some help on a project, well, you might post your work day, and if you're a uh, homeschooler or a person looking for employment, you might come and say, hey, I want to go and, and uh, work uh, at that business for that day. That's the concept, pretty straightforward, so let, let's look at how it works. Um, if I want to submit a family event, let's say, I'm going to come on here, and I'm going to enter in my email address. I'm going to say the title is... Um, Park Day at Frank Brown. And Frank Brown's a big park near here. I'm going to say the date is going to be this Sunday. Actually, we'll go with uh, next Saturday from 8, 8 a.m. till 10 a.m. Okay, so here is, uh, and then I'm, going to, I'm just going to put the address here, Frank Brown Park. Now, you'd probably want to type in the whole thing, but just for the sake of this discussion, we're going to do that. Frank Round Park, the description is bring frisbees and sunscreen for a day of fun in the sun. Okay. I don't even know if I spelled frisbees right. Yeah, there we go. Now, who's in? everyone's welcome to this one. Um, anything else we should know? Uh, park around back. We will meet on the soccer field. Okay. And I'm going to hit submit. Now that's immediately going to tell me that my response has been recorded. So uh, that was the user submission process. Pretty simple. Um, the user also just received an email that said, hey, you know, we did in fact receive your uh, response. Um, now they're not going to see it show up on the calendar right away. You could even put on your website just a little uh, you know, message that said when you enter an event, it needs to be approved by a moderator first, you know, so people don't expect to see it right away. However, you want to handle that. Um, but let's just say um, for now, there's no message. That's fine. I submitted my event. I got that email. I know it's been submitted. Um, now, on the admin side, what happens? Well, that was a family event I just submitted, and I see it hasn't shown up yet, but what needs to happen, again, ideally in the future, um, if this needed to be moderated, well, the admin would just hit a button, yes, and it would automatically populate to the calendar. And it's probably not a ton of code, and it's probably not too difficult, but if you don't have any coding background and you want to do this for free, um, this is the way to do that. You'd, you'd, you'd manually enter that event into the calendar. And we're, all, we're using basically free technology. So um, on the receiving end, <clears throat> that is going to show up automatically into a form. There it is right there. And you're going to take that information. In fact, I'll do it right now with you. It is on 3-4. So on the 4th, Frank, Park Day at Frank Brown Park, that's going to go into Family Events. And we're going to hit Edit Event. And that was from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. So... 
it's not all day so 8 a.m. we're gonna select everything here to 10 a.m. and we're gonna just copy and paste this stuff so bring frisbees all this is going right into the description and of course you'd want to actually put your the you'd want to get the hyperlink for the actual address on Google Maps and we're gonna put everyone is welcome that's gonna go in the description too you can space enter down a few times everyone is welcome um, park around back that's also going to go into the description and if maybe you wanted a, an option uh, when you build your form to ask the admit you know whoever's submitting this uh, family day maybe you want to ask them is it okay if we give out your email for questions if so you might want to put something like this at the end um, if you have questions email and then paste that email right in there okay so in this case we're ready we hit save now you're gonna see that event show up um, on this page automatically in a matter of moments but let me talk about a few things before so we'll come back and check that it should show up uh, right here on the fourth pretty soon first uh, let's talk about how you actually set this thing up in the beginning um, your first steps so I wanted to show you the end just so you kinda get an idea of big picture now let's go back and start at the beginning you'll start at Google Drive you'll make a new and if you don't know how to get to Google Drive when you're in Gmail let's say most most people know how to get to Gmail when you're here just go to these little boxes and go to Drive everybody has Drive if you have Gmail when you're in Drive go to new and Google Forms is what you're looking for when you build your Google Form and I have one built right here this is the family event you can customize it however you want whatever you want on there um, you can add you know short answer paragraph multiple choice check boxes drop down linear scale all of this stuff date and time okay um, you can also go up here and design it in fact uh, this is what we did to make the website look a little more beautiful so when you go to family event you actually have this little moving baby uh, that came straight from one of the pre-selected Google themes so that's pretty nice you can also do things in the settings um, like make sure that you collect email addresses and you know email receipts which means if somebody submits they get an email that says we've gotten your um, submission this says you know limit to one response well in, in our case we'd want people to be able to do unlimited you know unlimited submissions because they might want to enter you know an event every week or every day or whatever so we don't want to check that box and I also did check at th that the respondents can edit after they submit because I want them to be able to go back and edit what they've done. So there's some uh, you got some presentation options as well. I'll let you guys look through. And of course, if you're a teacher of a class, maybe you want to use the um, quiz option over here. So uh, Google Forms has a lot of built-in stuff. I'll let you poke around there and see. But this is what we've done to collect that information. And now Google Forms automatically populates that into Google Spreadsheets and that's what these sheets are so I've already done the I've already kinda of skipped ahead and had those open but how I found those sheets was by going to my Google Forms and going over to responses here and then I can actually view those responses um, and that's exactly what we did so so let's talk about and then what, what I've done in terms of just practical workflow is I've said okay I'm gonna when I do enter an event so I just entered this one I'm gonna color it blue that way that when I come back to this and, and I, let's assume that I've already done this one as well um, when I come back to this page if there's a line that's not colored I know I need to enter that so in terms of my workflow you know you can assign this to a non-technical person all they need to know how to use is sheets and calendar and in fact I would bookmark or favorite those two pages so that they just go here and they check they check their Google Sheet if they see a new event they just quickly go to Google Calendar and add that event uh, make it very simple for them and there shouldn't be many problems and as we go back and that was a family event let's see if it's populated yet it has not um, it's usually within 10 minutes it will uh, show up on the website so we'll check back shortly now what let me add, tell you a, a few reasons why I chose this calendar opposed to the other options because this calendar did cost a little bit of money 
um, and the other options were free. But the main reason was that the mobile version of this calendar is really nice. So let me show you what that looks like. Um, I'm, now I'm in my Wix editor. If you're not familiar with Wix, it's really powerful and really simple and very easy to use, so don't be intimidated by it. Uh, I'm going to just show you how I added this calendar and how I submit, um, how I um, entered the Google Forms in. Those are the two things you'll need to do on the technical side. Um, but first, let me just show you the, the mobile view and why I chose this calendar. As you see, it's really beautiful and it fits very nicely. And when you click, it is just awesome right there. So I really love that. And we see our event on the 28th has at, no, that's Jack's Pizza. That's a different, that's a work days. Let's go to family events here. Our fourth has not yet gotten there. Um, oh, there it is. So the park day at Frank Brown is up. So as you see, it's automatic. That's pretty nice. So if I come back here and I go to family events um, and I go over, there it is. Pretty cool. Um, so as you see, they don't need to know any coding or any, they don't need to publish the site or anything for it to automatically show up. So now let me show you on the Wix editor side how I added the two things, which one is a calendar, the Google Calendar, and the other one is a uh, Google Form. The Google Form is, a, is an embedded website, is all it is. So I literally just copy and paste. Um, in fact, you're going to go here. You're going to, um, in fact, let me go... I want to share this there's a, a, a couple ways to do it I can hit send and then I can grab that link right here and I can shorten the URL if I want and then I can just hit control C okay now I can come back to my Wix editor hit change address and I can just paste it right in there and hit update and those site will load in and of course you want to just you can you can change the width of this so I always make it 980, right? Because if it comes in 600, it might be scrunched. I just change it 980, and then I center it, and it will look good every time. Um, then I, you know, sometimes it also comes in way up like this, and you can scroll, but I don't like that. So I actually just drag this all the way down until um, it's it fits the whole thing without this scroll bar makes it look a little more natural and organic on the site so that's the, that's the theory there um, in fact I'm not going to save this one so I won't uh, waste your time so now the calendar is the next thing so adding the form is really straightforward grab that URL paste it into uh, if you need to know where to find that website all you do is go to um, add which is this plus mark go down to more and you'll see embed a site right there okay so that's what I did I, I brought this over here I hit change website address, update, and there's my site. And then I can make it how I want it. Right now we have this mirror effect or this forever effect going on. But you get the picture. It's very straightforward. Now, if I want to do the calendar, um, the calendar I've chosen, again, an upgraded version. It's called Events Calendar, so you do pay for this one. You go to the App Market, type in Calendar and you'll see it right there, Google Events, oh, I'm sorry, it's this one, Events Calendar. And um, it's really easy once you have put it in uh, the Wix, once you put it on Wix, then you can go here and design it how you want to. You can connect it to your Google Calendar, which is what I've done. All of this stuff is super simple. And you can just add events as well if you wanted to do it that way and not use Google Calendar at all. Um, but I like Google Calendar. It makes uh, especially if you're working with non-technical people, then you then they only have to open these two things. Um, you can just add your own events if you want, and it doesn't. It looks fine. I mean, it looks just like that. You can link to Google Maps and all that stuff. Um, so you still have the same abilities in terms of information and linking. Um, but if you're working with non-technical people, them just managing Google Calendar is much easier than having them log in to the to the uh, editor. So. That's how you do it, guys. If you have any questions, um, please ask. I'd also love to see any ideas. Like if you, if you, uh, using these two free technologies, if you come up with any really cool websites, please send them my way. I'd love to take a look. Um, if you ever have any questions, send me a message. Please uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. And there'll be more coming soon. Have a good one, guys. Blessings.